Let's look at psychedelics throughout history. So drug using behavior is one of the oldest behaviors of mankind. In fact, it, the, some of our earliest documentations explore our relationship, the human species relationship with substances. And so it's interesting that some of the earliest writings of mankind and carvings and pictures depict drug use and specifically the psychedelics. They've been around for a long, long time. But certainly these, these texts and documents refer back to ancient practices that show that these things have been used for centuries. We can see many traditions today that echo back throughout history, but they're very much alive and well today. And there's lots of examples, the ayahuasca use in the UVD church, the Santo Jami church, and shamanic traditions in South America. We can look at the curanderos use of psilocybin mushrooms. We can look at the Amini Miniscaro use of shamanic practice in Siberia and the Huichol's use of peyote. So those are all al alive and well traditions today that have ancient historical roots. And when we look at the use of all of these psychedelics by these different cultures, what we see is they're always used in ways that I would describe as being pro-social. By that I mean they helped communities and individuals and families connect. They celebrated transitions from youth to adulthood, transitions from fall to winter, transitions into spring, transitions of dying. So all kinds of transitions in terms of helping people to make changes and to connect cultures through spiritual experiences. And they were used for both physical healing and psychological healing. And they've been used for a long, long time. So if there's one word to describe everything I've just said, the word is pro-social. It's about connecting. It's integrated into communities. It's led by elders. And it's woven into the cultural fabric of the community. So I observe with great interest that what happened in the 60s was anti-social. The first time ever in the history of the human earth that psychedelics got linked with a group of individuals, the hippies, who were disconnecting from society. The message from Tim Leary was tune in, turn on, and drop out. So drop out is interesting, which basically is disconnect from our society. It had never happened histor historically. It had never been used that way. Now, I don't want to just blame Tim Leary. I mean, the Vietnam War was part of it. There was young men who really didn't want to be plucked off their comfortable couches and given a gun and stuck in a jungle and told to kill people when they had no association with the war at all. They weren't feeling threatened. They didn't have any belief that this was important, and they, were, they didn't want to go and fight. So there was a rebellion against that. And so the, and there was the the the... the, mo the that massive number of young people that had been produced from the baby boom. So there was a cultural thing that was happening there. So all of that went together to link psychedelics with an antisocial message. And so it's interesting. Then they were banned, they were criminalized, and with other drugs. And, and the amazing amount of human and cultural suffering that we have had to do as a society from that misunderstanding of the roles that drugs can play in society um, has caused an amazing expense, both emotional expense and financial expense for many societies around the planet. So now there's a, a psychedelic renaissance going on. You know, the, 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 the messaging and the interest in psychedelics is changing. So the messaging is again pro-social. The messaging is about psychedelic medicine is useful for healing. And lots of research has come out and I'd like to just explore some of it. Um, where do I start? Um, yeah.